In this video, I'd like to talk about aircraft intercommunication systems. For today's modern aircraft to operate smoothly, there's an enormous amount of communications that has to occur between many people. Both pilots have to be able to talk to each other, as well as all of the flight attendants. While on the ground, it's imperative that you have clear communications with your ground crew. While flying, there's two-way dialogue between the air traffic controllers, as well as other aircraft. To allow this communication to occur, let's take a look at this aisle stand. Specifically, what we're looking for are these two boxes right here. These are called the audio control panels. Now, each airline has the option of placing these panels anywhere they want, but they're traditionally placed here because they're easy to get to. The panel on the left is for the pilot, the panel on the right is for the co-pilot. Additionally, if you look at the instrument panel directly above your head, you'll find an audio selector panel for an observer that may be flying with the crew. I will be specifically covering the 737 aircraft. Although once you learn the 737, the main difference between that and the other aircraft is the color of the control panels. Let's take a closer look at the audio control panels. At the top of the panel are the mic selector buttons. Their purpose in life is to allow the operator to select who they're going to talk to. If you press this button here, you will be transmitting over VHF radio number one. Additionally, pressing the button will activate the volume control knob mounted directly below it. Turn the knob counterclockwise to decrease the volume or clockwise to increase the volume. This button's for VHF radio number two, VHF radio number three, HF radio number one, HF radio number two, flight interphone, service interphone, and finally, PA. As you're flying along and you hear the captain announce there's a herd of alligators on the left-hand side of the airplane, this is the button he has selected. There are actually three different ways you can talk on the interphone. You have a hand mic, a boom mic, and an oxygen mask. The captain, first officer, and observer all get their own hand mic. Additionally, the hand mic is actually the easiest way to use the interphone. Simply pick up the hand mic, press this button, and then talk into here. Whichever mic selector button is lit, in this case flight interphone, is where you're going to be talking to. Or you could opt to use the boom microphone. Again, all three flight deck positions have one. But to use it, you need to do a little more prep work. You'll notice this switch right here. What it does is determine where the key line is routed to. This is fancy mumbo jumbo that means when I press the button to talk, who will I be talking to? The boom mic or the mask mic? Better yet, where is this mask mic? Each flight crew position has a special storage box next to it. Inside the box is stored an oxygen mask to be used during emergency situations. If you have a mask over your mouth, you're no longer going to be able to talk into a boom mic. So there's a whole different microphone built directly into the mask itself. So for normal everyday use, make sure the switch is in the boom position. And if you're the flight crew and you find yourself in an emergency situation where you have to don your oxygen mask, move the switch to the mask position. Okay, that seems simple enough. I wonder if there's any way we can make it more complicated. Huh, funny I should ask. You may see an audio control panel where the boom mask switch isn't even installed. The reason for this is some airlines have decided that switch is too much work during an emergency. They want the microphone to automatically switch to the mask as soon as the crew member puts the mask on. This is accomplished in one of two ways. The first method, a micro switch in the door of the oxygen box. As soon as the doors are opened, it switches automatically to the mic in the mask. Or there can be a pressure switch inside the mask itself. When there's pressure on the mask, then it'll automatically switch to the mask as well. Having either of those two options means your switch will be missing here. So let's do a quick recap on this. You walk into the flight deck and try to use a boom mic. The boom mic doesn't work. First, check and make sure it's plugged into the aircraft. This is bad, and this is good. At your audio control panel, make sure it's selected to boom. If there's no switch located there, look to your oxygen mask. Ensure the mask is stowed, doors are closed, and push this reset switch to reset the whole circuit. If your boom mics still don't work, just give up and use the hand mic. Remember, they're tied directly to whichever switch you have selected. No oxygen involved. Oh, and give your avionics tech a call to come and fix the plane. 
Okay, earlier I mentioned in order to talk on the boom mics, you had to press a button. But which button? There's at least two buttons on this flight deck. And the one mounted on this hand mic is not one of them. All this button does is let you talk on the hand mic. If you take a look at the outboard horn of either control column, you'll see this two-way switch. It's conveniently mounted so the pilot does not have to remove their hands from the control column to operate it. Looking closer, you'll see the bottom one's labeled INT. Since this means interphone, and this is a video about the interphone system, could this be the switch we want? Actually, the answer is no. This is a proverbial trick question your math teacher used to always throw at you in high school. We actually want to press the top button, labeled mic, for microphone. Whenever you press this button, whichever mic button you have selected on the audio control panel is where you'll be transmitting. I'll cover the operation of this button in just a minute. The other way to talk on the boom mic is with the switch directly on the audio control panel. But instead of being labeled mic, it's labeled RT. RT is actually radio talk for receiver transmitter. Sometimes this button will be labeled radio. Other times PTT for push to talk. But it does the same thing as this mic button right here. Now some airlines have opted to put one additional mic switch in. It will be mounted on the glare shield. One for the first officer, one for the captain. Other airlines have mounted a clock button in this position. Pressing the clock button won't help you talk over the radios. So while using the optional buttons, you need to kind of pay attention. Going back to the audio control panel, you'll see this switch also has an interphone position, which will perform the same purpose as the one on the control column. And once again, I'll cover this later. While learning how complicated systems work, I like to create little simple rules to help keep things straight. For the mic buttons, I call it the top to top rule. Here, I want to deal with the buttons on the top. The mic button on the glare shield is the highest button, so it's on top. The top of the control column switch is the mic button, or the top of this switch on the audio control panel will all be linked directly to the buttons on the top of the audio control panel. Where they're selected is where you'll be transmitting to. As a quick side note, I also have a rule for applying and removing power from a 737. I call it the headbang rule. As you enter the flight deck, the order your head hits the switches on the overhead is the order that you'll turn them on. First, you'll bang into the DC power switch, so you turn it on. Then you'll bang into the AC power switch, so turn it on. Reverse the process for power off. Leaving the flight deck, you'll hit the AC power switch with your head first, and then the DC power switch. Okay, let's get back to interphone. I can't overstress how important it is for you to know where the mic selector buttons are actually selected to. Here, VHF-1 is selected. If that radio is tuned to 121.5, International Guard frequency, when you attempt to use this interphone, you'll actually be transmitting over that frequency, coincidentally at the same time breaking a lot of national and international laws. This is a bad thing. Let's talk about how the audio control panel affects what you're going to listen to. We already know when you select a mic selector button, the corresponding volume control knob below it is activated. Rotate clockwise to increase volume, counterclockwise to decrease. The audio will be heard in your headset. Now, if you want to listen to other things in addition to the person you're talking to, that's where these monitor buttons come into play. So we're flying along and we want to listen to the game on the radio. The ADF, or Automatic Direction Finding System, is simply a fancy AM radio that will point directly to where the broadcast is coming from. Press the knob down, it'll lock in place and light up to let you know it's selected. Now you hear both the flight interphone and the radio over your headset. You can select any number of additional radios to listen to. On this screen, in addition to flight interphone, you're listening to VHF-1, HF-1, and ADF-1, all at the same time. So if you want to share the game with someone who's not wearing headphones, the flight deck does come equipped with speakers. The captain's speaker is mounted over his left shoulder, the first officer's is mounted over his right shoulder. Activate the speaker by pressing the speaker button on the associated control panel. Now I know it doesn't seem very fair, but the observer doesn't get a speaker. So the speaker knob on his control panel doesn't actually do anything except light up. Now the introduction of a speaker will cause a problem that we'll have to deal with. Have you ever been to a concert and while they're setting up their equipment you hear loud squealing noises coming from the speakers? This problem is called feedback. What happens is you talk into your microphone. That audio comes out of the speaker and goes straight back into your microphone. The audio is amplified and sent back to the speaker, where it comes straight back into the microphone again, where it's amplified. Eventually you overdrive your system and you get squealing. The fix is easy. When your microphone is keyed so you can speak over it, the audio out of both speakers is muted. Problem solved. 
unless you work for one of the airlines that don't mute both speakers. Some airlines just mute the on-side speaker. So when you talk over the captain's microphone, you run the risk of the first officer's speaker causing squealing over the interphone system. If this happens, reach across and turn the first officer's volume control down. That should fix it. I just talked about normal operation. Well, how's it operate during an emergency when you have masks selected? Well, in order to put the mask on, you'll take your boom mic headset off. And the mask is going to fit tightly around your mouth. So outside noise that can cause feedback won't reach the microphone. So at this point, the flight deck speakers do not mute. Looking at the grand scheme of things, emergencies are usually pretty noisy. Alarm bells going off, whistles, people screaming. So you want the speakers to be as loud as possible so you can hear them. Finally, as far as audio reception goes, we need to talk about this knob. V means voice, B means both, and R means range, which is fancy talk for CW, commonly called Morse code. The real purpose of these four knobs here is so you can listen for the identification from your nav aids that you're tuned to. Each nav aid will identify itself in one of two ways. They'll either announce who they are using voice or send out a CW signal. Still, other nav aids transmit both voice and CW. This knob is simply a filter. When it's set to R, only the uh, CW signal makes it through. If you go to V, only the voice signal will make it through. And B will allow both signals to make it through. Normally, you leave this in the B for both position. Okay, let's go back to the control column and take a look at the other position of the switch. Earlier, we saw that to talk on the radio, we would push the mic position of the switch. But if you want to talk to the person sitting next to you, you would have to move the mic selector switch over to flight interphone. Have your conversation, then move the mic selector switch back over to the radio. All of this can be avoided just by using the INT position of the switch. It is actually hardwired to the flight interphone. So when the pilot wants to talk on the radio, he or she just pushes the top of the button. When they want to speak to their co-pilot, they press the bottom of the button. The same holds true for the key switch on the audio control panel. The top position goes to the radio, the bottom position goes straight to the flight interphone. Finally, what happens when the mic selector is set to flight interphone? Well, both positions of the switch will go to the flight interphone. Mic because you've selected to talk on flight interphone, and INT because it's hardwired to flight interphone. Up to now, we've primarily covered the flight interphone. The bulk of the flight interphone jacks are all located in the flight deck, with one exception. There is an interphone jack located on the main power panel for use by the ground crew. Earlier, I mentioned there was more than one interphone. What I mean by that is how many different conversations can you hold without interfering with each other? The answer is four. You can actually talk to other people using the PA system, but keep in mind the passengers in the cabin will hear the entire conversation. Additionally, the flight crew can select this if they wish to listen to the movie that's playing or the announcements the flight attendant's making. The second interphone allows you to talk over the radios. The third interphone, flight interphone. Moving on, we have cabin interphone. Using this, flight crew can talk to the flight attendants or the flight attendants can talk to each other. Normally, the cabin interphone has between two and four handsets distributed throughout the cabin. Simply pick the handset up and start talking. If the person you're trying to contact isn't actually listening to the cabin interphone, you can send a chime to that person to let them know you're trying to contact them. Press the two button to contact the pilot the 5 button to contact another flight attendant, or if you want to talk over the PA, press 8. When you press the 8 button, it actually changes the handset into a hand mic. The handset speaker will become inactive because anything you'll hear will now come over the PA. To talk, press the button that says push to talk, we're trying to keep it pretty simple here, and speak into the microphone. Finally, there is one more optional handset. It can be mounted on the back of the PA aisle stand or on a special bracket on top of it. Earlier, I mentioned there was four separate interphones, but if you were paying attention, you'll see there's five interphones listed on this page. The reason for only four is because cabin interphone and service interphone are actually the same interphone. When the aircraft is on the ground, additional interphone jacks are added to the cabin interphone for use by maintenance personnel. This is accomplished by looking at the P5 overhead in the flight deck. You'll find a switch labeled service interphone. Move that switch to the on position. It's that simple. The location of the service interphone jacks are as follows. Each wheel well has a jack mounted just forward of it. Let me give you a real quick side note on these jacks. If you're going to plug an interphone cord into this jack, please take your cord and wrap it around the support arm, then route it forward and plug it into the jack. As you'll soon find out in the aviation world, either you or somebody else is going to trip on that cord.
The end of the cord that plugs into the jack looks like this. When it's installed, it presses against these spring-loaded pieces of metal. So a sudden jerk on that interphone cord will destroy the inside of this jack. Routing your cord this way will prevent that from happening. There's a jack mounted back by the APU. On the right wing at the refueling station. Inside the electronics bay. And inside the aircraft mounted on the ceiling above the aft galley. Some airlines have added one more service interphone jack at the main power panel on the nose next to the flight interphone. Here's a quick troubleshooting tip. If you're having troubles with your cabin slash service interphone, go up to the flight deck and disable all your service interphone jacks by putting the switch into the off position. If the problem's still there, it's a cabin interphone problem. If it went away, it's a service interphone problem, which is actually the more likely scenario since the service interphone jacks take quite a beating. There are a couple of airlines out there that have opted for one more interphone configuration. It is called the MedLink. I'm pretty sure it's short for Medical Link. Normally, flight attendants only have access to these interphones. But if there should happen to be a medical emergency back in the cabin area, the survivability of the passenger may depend on the flight attendant being able to use the radios to talk directly to a doctor on the ground. To accomplish this, there are between three and four additional jack locations. They are mounted under the stow bin along the right-hand side of the aircraft. These jacks are wired in parallel with the observer's audio control panel. Select your radio and contact your doctor. Then plug your headphone and hand mic into the jacks. Okay, I think I've covered the majority of the important stuff, and I'd like to leave you with some words of wisdom. If you're watching this video because you're thinking about starting a career in the aviation world, you can become a pilot or a flight attendant, but aircraft maintenance is where the real fun is. Thanks for watching.